Welcome to part 7 of Let's Play Trial of Champions by Ian Livingstone. Um, I had done this video about 5 days ago, but unfortunately my voice didn't record, uh, which I found out after spending half an hour recording it. Uh, I might add. Anyway, and that was because my microphone decided to break. Uh, I now have a new microphone, so um, off we go. Okay, so at the, at the end of the last part, I'll say that again, at the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 35. Let's reread this as a reminder, if I, ha if I haven't done so already. Okay, uh, you do as instructed, and watch the trial, the trial master as he counts the rings. Uh, you'll have to forgive me, I'm, I'm a little bit unwell. Anyway, um, you do as instructed, and watch the, tri the trial master as he counts the rings. So far, so good, he says. Now, if you will follow me, we will proceed to the next stage. Uh, he gathers up the rings and leads you to the throne upon which he was sitting. He gives you back the rings and tells you to sit down. There is a panel divided into nine squares, three by three in the arms of the chair, with each square numbered between one and nine. Now, I want you to place three rings on three of the numbered squares in order. If you know upon which squares to place the rings, turn to that reference. If you do not know, turn to 286. Okay, we do know, because I wrote it down before, uh, set 1, 2, 4, 9. So if you notice, the numbers 1 to 9 only appear once in the nine digits that we have. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the idea here. Anyway, so 249 is set 1, um, so that's that. Now the old wizard smiles and says, well done, and, and, and now the next three, please. If you know the second sequence of numbers, turn to that reference. If you do not know it, turn to 286. Okay, we do know because I wrote down set 2, 358. So let's turn to 358. I'm always reminded of 358 in Fighting Fantasy because that's the one in Warlock of Firetop Mountain where we finally meet the Warlock, I think. 358, if I remember. Which I do. Okay. Uh, you must have made a thorough search... <coughs> Sorry again. Uh, you must have made a thorough search of the dungeon. Baron Sakamvit swore that nobody would be able to do this. Anyway, the last three, please. If you know the last sequence of numbers, turn to that reference. If you do not know it, turn to 286. Well, now you come to mention it, I do know it. It's set 3, 176. So we are now turning to 176. Oh, there it is. Um, incredible, says the old wizard. Who would have thought it possible? Never mind, stand up and follow me. He leads you through a doorway into another room, which has bare stone walls and is empty except for a long case clock standing against one of the walls. Uh, you notice that there are no hands on the clock face. On the wall opposite the clock, there are four levers numbered 3, 6, 9 and 12. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the wizard mutters a few unintelligible words to his familiar, which then flies off his shoulder and begins to circle over your head. You watch as the creature grows steadily bigger until it has a, a six feet wingspan. Now I must leave you to fend for yourself, says Lexus as he leaves the room, looking, locking the door behind him. As soon as he is gone, the fire imp swoops down to attack you, spitting fire. Fire imp, skill 9, stamina 4. If you win, turn to 127. <coughs> yeah, so, fire imp... Uh, so I'm a little bit unwell, um, and it's slowly getting worse. Anyway, uh, Fire Imp, Skill 9, Stamina 4, okay. Okay, so, right, we're rolling for him first, and I have Skill 11. <coughs> Let me just have a drink of water. Oh, that's nice, that. Okay. So 9 plus 6 is 15, I get uh, 17. So 15 to 17. Oops. Okay, it puts him down to 2. Okay, next, 9 plus 8 is 17, I get 18. So 17 to 18. And that's the end of the little fire imp there. Or is it? Right. Let's get rid of the buzzing. There we go. All right, back we go, and we're turning to 127.
Uh, before you can even get your breath back, the corpse of the fire imp starts to metamorphose before your eyes. A tall, red-skinned creature with large, leathery wings, horns and cloven hooves uh, for feet stands before you. F flame shoots out from its nostrils and it carries a whip in one hand and a flaming sword in the other. Now you must fight the vile fire demon. Is it Big Horn Guy from Legend? <laughs> Uh, the Prince of Darkness, or whatever his name is, played by Tim Curry. I do like that film, Legend, but... Um, yeah, that's all I'll say about that. But yeah, I do like that film. Uh, anyway, um, um, interestingly, uh, the woman in it who plays Lily, she was in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I think that was the one, yeah, with uh, Matthew Broderick. Anyway, enough of that. Um, fire, de fire Demon, skill 10, stamina 10. The Fire Demon does not only attack with its flaming sword. Throw one extra die every attack round. On a roll of one or two, the fire from its nostrils will burn you for two points of damage to your stamina. On a roll of three or four, its whip will lash you for one point of damage to your stamina. On a roll of five or six, both the shooting flame and the whip will miss you. If you win, turn to 303. Okay, so after every attack round, we have to roll another die. Okay, so Fire Demon. This is another really difficult battle that uh, our old friend Ian Livingstone, I presume, has put into this. Uh, this, is, this is a tough one. Um, when I did the video before, because this is my second attempt at this, because... You know, the microphone broke and that five days ago. Um, and I was a bit busy. Um, and I'm doing it now because I've got some free time because I'm ill and I'm off. And, yeah, I don't feel great, but um, I can do this. Anyway, so, anyway, as I was saying, on the last attempt at this, I died about five times. So I'm going to have to cheat a bit at this, I'm afraid. I'll, I'll just keep doing it until I win, really. I'll just have to reset it until I win. Anyway, so what makes this tough is the extra die roll because even if you manage to uh, if you manage to defeat him in an attack round, you can still do that easy point of damage on you or two or one points of damage on you. So you've got to be very lucky in this. Anyway, ten plus seven is seventeen. I get fifteen. Here we go. And I'm already going to restart because that's a bad start. Okay, so I'm going to restart that. So that's um, first go. So now on the second, let's restart. Okay, 10 plus, no, nope, nope. Yeah, there we go. 10 plus 4 is 14. I get 17. So 14 to 17. Don't know how many restarts that was, but who cares? Anyway, but this is a tough fight. You can trust me on that. This is classic Ian Livingstone. Uh, anyway, we need to roll another die to determine if we get some more damage. Okay, uh, first of all, I put him down to 8. Yeah, good. All right, um... Okay, and we get a six. Oh, good, that was lucky. We get no points of damage then. That's quite rare. <clears throat> it's only one out of three that we don't get any damage out of this. Um, okay. um, excuse me. Sorry, just tired and ill. Okay, so ten plus... Uh, no, I'm not having that. No, ten plus five is fifteen. I get eighteen. So fifteen to eighteen... No, I, I just, you know, I'm not having that. It's just stupid. This is a ridiculously hard battle. If you tried this, you would understand. Okay, oh, I have to roll another die, don't I? Okay, that's um, two, points, two points of damage. That would have been four points of damage just there, because he would have won that with the 12. And I would have had the... Uh, that extra two points of damage, because his flame hurt me or something. Anyway, all right, next one. Okay, 10 plus 7 is 18... I oh, know, 17 rather, and I get 20. So 17 to 20. It's just a stupidly hard battle that's, you know, made stupidly hard by Ian Livingstone. I've got to roll another thing. All right, it's another two points of damage. You know, just from, you know, that die roll alone, you know. So you can see how easily my 12 stamina points, because you already get a replenishment in this game. Uh, you can see how fast it goes down. Anyway, 10 plus 5 is 15. Uh, no. And I get 17. So 15 to 17. <clears throat> if you want to have a go at me for cheating, you can you can pen a letter to my solicitor. 
I'll give you the address in the video description. Um, quick hint, I won't really. Anyway, um, <coughs> okay, next. Four, okay, that's one point of damage because that's the whip hurting us, isn't it? So that puts me down to seven. Oh dear, I feel ill. Right, okay. Um, ten plus six is sixteen. I get twenty. So sixteen to twenty. And that's the end of him. But I still do, you know, during the attack round, his whip could have hurt me or something. So I'll do another one of these. Uh, yep, I get another point of damage for uh, for the whip. Okay. Oops, made it smaller there. Right, it's a six. Jolly good. <clears throat> right, so that's the end of Mr. Fire Demon. But yeah, that is a tough fight. Um, I I cannot do that without cheating. In my last go, it took me about, about five goes, or possibly more, I can't remember. But in those goes, I didn't cheat. I'm only cheating more now because, you know, I know what it's like. But in those ones, I tried to do it earnestly and said, OK, we failed, let's restart. But... It's just very difficult, and I need all the health that I can get for what's coming up. Anyway, 303 we're turning to. If you if you had done this book, you'd understand that as well. So uh, I'm sorry, but Ian Livingstone makes these ridiculously hard. I don't I don't know why. He's just you know is it, they have to be playable. Anyway, expecting yet another hideous creature to rise up, you are relieved to see the fire demon become engulfed in its own flame and turn to ashes. You walk over to the door as it is both locked and bolted. Suddenly the clock starts to tick loudly and the two bare walls at either end of the room start to close in, making an unnerving grating sound. Will you? Call out to the wizard, turn to 220. Put the brass hands on the clock if you have them, turn to 81. Or pull a lever, turn to 48. Okay, we are going to put the brass hands on the clock because we should have some brass hands. And there we go, two brass clock hands. There we go. So we're turning to 81. Which is nine squared, okay. Which is both a square and a fourth power. Um, okay, because it's three to the power of four. Anyway, um, well, every fourth power is a already a square number anyway, by definition, because it's a squared that's squared. Anyway, um, so it's just not that interesting. Anyway, you take the brass hands out of your leather pouch and fit them onto the and fit them onto the socket in the centre of the clock. The time now displayed is three o'clock precisely. You turn to the levers and deduce which one must be pulled. Turn to 48. 48 we go. Oh, that was half of 48 there. Um, you stare at the levers and make your choice. Will you pull? Lever number three, turn to 377. Lever number six, turn to 257. Lever number nine, turn to 158. Or lever number 12, turn to 116. Is that all of them? Yes, it is. We are going to pull lever number three and turn to 377. Here we go. When you pull down the lever, the front panel of the long case clock swings open to reveal a secret passageway out of the room through the back of the clock. You just manage to squeeze through the open panel, and moments later you hear the sound of splintering wood as the clock is crushed between the closing walls. You follow the winding passageway until it ends at a T-junction where it meets a main tunnel. If you wish to go left, turn to 232. If you wish to go right, turn to 319. We are going to go left and turn to 232. <clears throat> Here it is. Okay, uh, the tunnel curves gently round to the right until you reach two stone archways. A hunchbacked man dressed in ragged clothing is sitting on a stool between the arches, sharpening a stick. He looks surprised to see you and says, Well, I didn't expect anyone to get this far. You are nearly through the dungeon. Just take the tunnel to my left and you will reach the exit in five minutes. If you wish to take the hunchback's advice, turn to 291. If you'd rather walk under the archway to his right, turn to 28. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, there's the hunchback. Um, now, if you remember, we got some advice earlier that said the hunchback is a liar. I think that was from that person we rescued or something. The elf or something. Anyway, so there he is. Looks a bit like Warwick Davis, if I may be so bold. Anyway, um, anyway so we're going to ignore his advice, because he's a liar, and turn to the... and uh, Walk... What am I saying? 
I'd rather walk under the archway to his right. Anyway, so turn to 28. Here we go. I'm not saying Warwick Davis is a hunchback, by the way. I'm just saying his face just looked a little bit like Warwick Davis. It's in no way related to the fact that they're both disabled or handicapped, whatever the word you're allowed to use now is. Anyway, um, impaired, I don't know. Anyway, as you walk along, you hear the sound of water dripping from the ceiling into shallow puddles on the stone floor. You hold out your hand and catch a drop and shout out in pain. It is not water, as you had thought, but some kind of corrosive acid. Now, this got me last time when I thought I did the video last time. Now, is that a tautology? Because are all acids corrosive? I mean, by definition, an acid is like, it sort of takes, what is it, something ions, hydrogen ions from substances or adds ions, I don't know, whatever it does. So... By definition, that would mean all acids are to some degree corrosive. They will corrode a substance, even like something like DNA, which is deoxyribonucleic acid. It's still an acid, so it will be corrosive to some degree. Um, so therefore, I would judge and say that the term corrosive, uh, corrosive acid is a tautology. A tautology is where it's a double meaning, like um, a tiny dwarf or a tiny ant, when all ants are tiny, you know... Um, a uh, a woody forest, or a uh, uh, a a wet puddle. You, uh, you get the idea. It's just where it's sort of like a you know you don't need the extra information. The extra information is sort of superfluous by definition. That's a tautology in itself. Extra information is always no, not necessarily. Anyway, I'm talking to be bollocks now anyway so i would judge and say that co the term corrosive acid is a tautology and i don't even know why i'm talking about it to be honest but anyway that's that anyway but i sort of thought about this last time and had the same sort of discussion with myself last time and and uh, made that judgment if you disagree just feel free to leave a comment but all acids by definition either take or add an eye on whatever it is i'm not very good at chemistry so therefore, they must all be corrosive to some degree. They would corrode a substance somewhere, which would imply corrosiveness. Um, so you don't really need to say corrosive acid, you just need to say some kind of acid, because they're all corrosive. Anyway, um, if you have a shield, turn to 71. If you do not have a shield, you may either walk on and risk being burnt. Is it really burnt or dissolved? I mean, acids don't really burn anything, they dissolve things. I mean, burning something is, um, is oxidation, whereas what acids do, uh, they corrode and they sort of dissolve stuff. So uh, uh, I think what it should, it should read is, if you don't have a shield, you may either walk around, uh, walk on and risk being corroded or dissolved, turn to 335, or walk back to the hunchback and go through the other archway, turn to 291. Do not walk back to the hunchback because he was lying. Anyway, so we do have a shield. Um, it is, uh, where is it? There, there's my shield that I picked up, so that's that. And we are turning to 71. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Holding the shield over your head, you walk along the dripping tunnel unharmed. At last you see daylight at the end of the tunnel and walk quickly towards it. Turn to 188. Okay, uh, just a moment, I just need to make a quick phone call, I'll pause the video. And I'm back, okay, um, paragraph 188. Uh, there is a large crowd gathered at the exit to the dungeon. When they see you appear, they can hardly believe their eyes and burst into rapturous applause, cheering at the tops of their voices. Okay, another thing I thought about pr uh, before when I did the, uh, the dad one of these videos. Um, right, if they can hardly believe their eyes, why is there a huge crowd there? Answer me that one. Riddle me that one. If it's so rare in, uh, uh, for someone to be successful in this uh, in this dungeon why there is there a huge crowd there you would think that they would uh, that they would think oh um there's no point hanging by the exit hanging around by the exit of death chap dungeon or trial of champions whatever um because um no one ever wins anyway so you know it'd be like waiting for People like waiting for England to win the World Cup. <laughs> you, know, every, you know, no one apart from the die-hard fans actually believes it can happen. 
Um, you know, although, uh, to be fair to that, they are a, um, a pretty large crowd. But, you know, but this is like life or death, you know. It's very unlikely. Anyway, so I just don't think there would be a huge crowd there. Anyway, uh, a message is sent to Baron Sakumvit, who was not expecting anyone to emerge from the killer labyrinth. But you notice Lord Karnas standing expressionless in the crowd, surrounded by his guards. Um, hatred wells up inside you, but you are too exhausted to think about avenging the slaves of Blood Island just yet. Two men run forward and lift you onto their shoulders and carry you to the town square where the victor's ceremony is to take place. You are carried up a platform and set down on a cushioned chair while various servants tend to you, bandaging your wounds and giving you special healing potions to drink. Add two skill points and six stamina points. Okie dokie. So that's six stamina points and two skill points I don't need. Okay, let's jump to 12 stamina. Um, at last, Baron Sakumvit appears to make the presentation of 20,000 gold pieces. You stand up to receive the prize, but Lord Karnas climbs up the steps of the platform to intervene. Looking surprised, Baron Sakumvit asks why his hated brother has come to Fang. In a voice full of contempt, Karnas replies, Because the warrior standing before you is my slave and is representing me. I will take the prize if you don't mind. Uh, or, I should say, um... And he's representing me. I will take the prize, if you don't mind. Baron Sakumvit turns to you and says, This year there is an additional gift for the victor. Any one wish will be granted. Warrior, what is your wish? Your chance has come, and you answer that it is your wish to fight Lord Karnas and avenge the slaves who died on Blood Island. Lord Karnas tries to refuse the challenge, but the screaming crowd starts to boo and will not let him leave the platform. He turns to face you, draws his sword, and says... So be it. Lord Karnas, skill 10, stamina 10. If you win, turn to 400. Okay. This is an easier fight than the last one because we don't have that annoying whip or uh, flame thing coming out. So that making us having to roll another die. Okay, so skill 10. Oh, still a difficult fight though. Skill 10, stamina 10. I know I don't need the, the comma after the skill 10, but it's just habit. Anyway. Um, okay, so let's do this. Okay, so uh, 10 plus... 8 is 18, I get 17. So 18 to 17. <clears throat> that means he draws first blood. It's a good film, first blood, one of my favourites. Um, okay. Uh, 10 plus 9 is 19, I get 20. So 19 to 20. Puts him down to eight. Uh, just a moment, please. Just need to check something on my phone very briefly. Sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, okay, where was I? Okay, we're rolling for him again. 10 plus 11 is 21. I get 16. So 21 to 16. Puts me down to 8. Right. Um, 10 plus 3 is 13. I get 20. So 13 to 20. 20, there we go. Puts him down to 6. <clears throat> 10 plus 6 is 16, I get 19, so 16 to 19, why is he so powerful, I mean, if he's that powerful, why didn't he do it himself, well, I already know the answer, because he doesn't want to die, but, you know, he's just, he doesn't have to be that powerful, does he, anyway, um, 10 plus uh, 21, 18, right. I mean, you're pretty much guaranteed to lose when you when they're getting like 11s and 12s, aren't they? Aren't you? Um, six. All right. Okay. Puts me down to six. All right. Uh, all right. Ten plus. Great. Twenty, and I get nineteen. Twenty to nineteen. Okay, Lord Carnus, can you please stop getting huge numbers on your dice rolls, please? I said please twice there, I know, but that's how it is. That's because I'm so polite. Okay, 10 plus 5 is 15. I get 18. So 15 to 18. 
puts them down to two. Right, okay. 10 plus 9 is 19, I get 17. So 19 to 17. Right, I'll just write that down in a moment. Right, 19 to 17. Oh dear. It's neck and neck. Okay, 19 to 17. 10 plus 7 is 17, I get 20. So 17 to 20. And I actually did this without cheating. So, But I would have cheated. And had he won that attack round. Anyway, that's the end of Lord Carnus. Goodbye. The slaves' lives are avenged. I'm sure they're very happy now in heaven. Okay, so... Um, get rid of the buzzing, and then let... And then, as he said, Len Vet... T Len Vet t you know, turn to whatever. Anyway, then let's turn to 400. So we've defeated Lord Carnus, and we're turning to 400. I mean, hated brother or not, you'd think, you know, Baron Suckenbit would say, hang on a minute, maybe I don't want my brother to die. You know, just, you know, I personally would, you know. If I had a brother whom I hated, I mean, I still wouldn't want him dead. Um, that's just me, though. Anyway, uh, to the wild cheering of the crowd, you are handed your victory prize by Baron Suckenbit. Such a huge sum of money is more than you could ever dream of. Um, let alone, is more than you could ever dream of, yeah, I'm trying to see if I can not have the preposition at the end of that clause, but I can, anyway, it's more than you could ever dream of, let alone carry, um, right, so we have 20,000 gold, I suppose better late than never, right, so we have 20 grand, there we go, uh, uh, 20 grand, let's put it on a horse, right, okay, I'm not really a gambling addict though, sorry, um, for the next week, you recover from the ordeal and begin to enjoy yourself once again. You start to think about what you are going to do with all that kablingi, with all that money, with all the money. A wild idea crosses your mind to hire an army and conquer the unknown lands to the east of Moonstone Hills. Yeah, that's a good idea. Hire an army and cause more death and needless destruction. Brilliant. The more you think about it, the more the idea, uh, the idea appeals to you. Wow. The next day you begin your preparations and recruitment notices go up all over town and throughout the rest of the province. With new heart and high spirits you set off east a week later with your hired army to begin a mass slaughter in a new adventure. Seriously, that's what a horrible ending. Yes, I've just gone through a horrible ordeal um, yeah, um, replete with death, destruction and you know the very depths of human misery. And what do I do? Let's start a war. Great idea. A pointless war to conquer... That's horrible. What a horrible ending to a book, you know, to a really difficult book as well. I just, you know, I just don't like this book. It's too difficult. It's classic Ian Livingstone of just ridiculously hard for the sake of being hard with stupid things to find that are impossible to find. And even when you do find them, uh, you know, you still have to fight the fire demon, which is, you know, borderline impossible, even with 11 skill. You get no, you get hardly any health upgrades. And, and the ending is just horrible, starting a war for no reason. It's just, I don't like this book. Um, you know, it's just... I will do next. My next video is going... Before I go off on one again, uh, my next video will either be... Well, my next book will be Rings of Kefa, which is another space one. But before I do that, I would like to do Stride on the Master System. Uh, I would like to do another video game. I've been in tons of books. I would like to do Stride on the Master System. I'll practice that a bit. It's a bit... It's very straightforward, but uh, tricky in places. Um, yeah, so I'll do Strider, and then after that I will do um, Rings of Kefa, but I'll think about it. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I uh, hope you can join me for another video soon. Goodbye.